let's take a few minutes to talk about sound. We've mostly been talking about text and tokens and how we can use tokens in um, algorithms and neural networks, for example, how we can use writing. But how could we use data from spoken language, from speech, and put it into a neural network? In order to do that, we're going to have to take a brief look at how humans produce sound. So speech is mostly air, is a kind of signal that travels through the air when your lungs push air out uh, into the air. This compression wave that leaves your lungs passes through several filters, essentially. So the air coming out of your lung first passes through your pharynx and particularly through your vocal cords. Your vocal cords are um, flaps controlled by groups of bones. I recommend that you look for videos of other work online because they're really cool. They are flaps that can expand, that can uh, be very open or be very closed. And they always oppose a certain resistance to the upcoming current of air. So when the air hits the cords, they open and close and open and close and open and close periodically. By doing this, they introduce a certain frequency of vibration into the signal. In addition to, and by the way, uh, you can feel them vibrating if you put your uh, hand against your throat and say a vowel. For example, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Pause the video and do it yourself with any of the vowels. Uh, can you feel how your throat is vibrating? That's the vibration of the vocal cords. This vibration then passes onto your mouth and your nose. And the shape of your mouth changes the signal. Have you ever been in a cave, for example, and noticed how caves can have like an echo, 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 and have different echoes? This is essentially what your mouth is doing. The air is coming out of your lungs, through your vocal cords, and passes into the cave that is your mouth. And the shape of your mouth changes the different echoes of the, freak, of the vibration of the vocal cords. For example, your mouth can be wide open when you say, ah, uh, or it's a little bit more close when you say, e, i. These changes in shape make it so that the uh, echoes of the original vibration change. And what comes out of your mouth is a uh, fairly complex signal. As you can see here, it's not, well, here we go. The signal is not a perfect uh, sine wave, for example, but something that is fairly jaggedy and looks like it has several frequencies mounted on one another, which is precisely what happens. It has a lot of echoes as it goes out of your mouth. What we can do is uh, capture this signal with, for example, a microphone, and then decompose it into constituent frequencies. This is called a, performing a fast Fourier transformation. And the result of the transformation is a spectrogram. As you can see here, this is the amplitude of the signal, and this is the spectrogram of the signal. What these energy ribbons tell us is that there was some energy at lower frequencies. There was some energy in this range of frequencies. And there's almost no energy in this range of frequencies. So it can give us information about the vibration of the original uh, parts of your mouth as the signal was coming out. The signal is many rich in cues. As you can see, um, there's larger concentrations of energy here than here. There's con uh, concentrations of null energy. Sometimes the, uh, the curve of energy goes down very smoothly. Sometimes it cuts off drastically. So there's a ton of cues that we could use regarding frequencies, the intensity of the signal, and changes in the pitch of the signal. For example. And I'm going to show you a quick example. Uh, to your lower left, you have the URL for a program called PROT, 
that lets us de uh, that records audio and then uh, gives you the spectrogram, decomposes the frequencies to give you a nice spectrogram. Where we're going to see this, different vowels have different energy prints. So this is some more, something where we could easily tell vowels apart. And I want you to remember this chart as we go along. Different vowels have different energy imprints. Their maximum frequency, their maximum energies occur at different frequencies. So for example, a vowel like a ah is going to have uh, larger concentrations of, concentrations of energy here and here and here. And this is very different from the concentrations of energy here, here, and here. So ooh, uh, prot. Let's record some sound of me saying the vowels of Spanish. A, E, I, O, U. Vowels. We're going to go to view and edit. And here we have the audio signal. And I'm going to play it for you. A, E. E, O, U, mm -hmm. and these red ribbons here represent the distribution of energy. So, for example, A has energy peaks at 851 hertz, 1400 hertz, and 2500 hertz. Those are the first uh, three peaks in order from uh, smallest to greatest. The first three peaks of energy of A are at different locations, 405, 2,321, 2,600. The configuration of the first three echoes, uh, the first three concentrations of energy, as you can see, these are close together. One, two are close together and they're far apart from three. Here, one is, very, is down below and two and three are close, are close together and above. So as you can see, the energy imprints in the two vowels are very different, and they're very different for all of them. Just as a final demonstration, I'm going to record some phrase. La frecuencia de las vocales son todas diferentes. The frequencies of the vowels are all different. As you can see, the energy has uh, the signal has a certain energy imprint that goes back and forth. So what we could do is that we could sample the energy, the, the signal here, and then here, and here, and then, for example, one millisecond later or five milliseconds later. And as we go along, we could measure the energies as each point of the signal. And indeed, each point of the signal is going to have a slightly different energy print. And this is what we can use to give this to like a classifier, for example. We could record, for example, the first uh, peak of energy coming from below. We're going to call that F1. The formal name is a formant. We could record the second peak of energy, uh, the third peak of energy as features. And then we could associate those features with a label, for example, the vowel E, the vowel A, and the vowel E. This is how we could provide input to a neural network or to any classifier so that they can take an audio signal and then as input and they can give us a sound as an output. By the way, many uh, contemporary systems, what they actually do is take not three features, but 39 features. Um, different measurements of energy throughout each point, it's uh, at 12 points and it measures the velocity of change, the, the, the velocity of the energy, the acceleration and so forth. But we use these spectrographic features to then get a, uh, get a label for what sound that feature, uh, that energy might be representing. In summary, spoken language is transmitted through audio waves. The, wa the waves come out of your lung, are deformed by your vocal cords, they change frequency, they uh, take even more echoes and frequencies from your mouth and your nose, and then they come out of your mouth. This produces a very complex and rich signal 
that we can split apart into a spectrogram. We can then see where the highest concentrations of energy are and use that as input for systems. I'm gonna, just going to let that sound. Thank you for being here. We can use that signal as input for systems like automated speech recognition. On week nine, we're going to be looking at the many intricacies involved in doing speech recognition. But I just um, wanted to get started on the topic.